show where high culture and pop culture collide. You Don't Know Jack is sponsored by Crust Busters. We bust the crust or we go bust. And now, here's your host, Guy Towers. All right, welcome to the game. You know, I heard you'd rather just roll over and sleep, but uh, hey, maybe you can stay awake long enough to play, huh? What do you say? Here's your pointy pointies, gang. Now be vicious out there. Hit that S key till your finger starts bleeding. Okay, here we go. And hey, I promise we'll be done before that wet spot crusts over, okay? It's your buzzer player three and let's... All right, some good cash riding on this one. And the category is... I need a backhoe to break through this crust. Coming at you. Say you want to bake a special Earth Day pie. If the crust of the pie is as thick as the Earth's crust, what will people have to cut through to get to the tasty filling? Hit it, player one. Almost there. Almost there. Oh, my God. This pie is full of molten apple filling. Run for your life. Run for your life. The Earth's crust is about 20 miles thick. And, hey, what better way to celebrate the Earth than to do a little mining? Player one, give me some bu And the category is... Ew, you eat the crust? Okay, see if you can figure out this pizza-y analogy. Thick crust is to radio waves as thin crust is to what? Is it gamma waves, television waves, x-ray waves, or microwaves? Take it, player two. Radio waves are the widest, and gamma waves are the thinnest. Of course, my favorite has always been the deep dish waves with the crazy crust. Player two, hit your buzzer and let's see what's in the kitty. Nice, not too shabby. All right, the category on this one is... So, why do they call you crusty? Oh, no, the Springfield nuclear reactor has exploded and the escaping radiation has mutated our favorite Simpsons characters. If Krusty the Clown mutates into a crustacean, which of the following body parts will he not grow? A shrimp tail, a scallop shell, a crab claw, or lobster antennae? <laughs> Player two, grab it! If Krusty grew a scallop shell, he'd be a mollusk, not a crustacean. And then he'd have to abandon his fans and go live in the water, which would be completely shellfish of him. Okay. Stanky Tang chocolate reason. No, please, please, no, please, no, please, no, please, no. Oh, it's a gibberish question. Gee, I get it. Okay, the gibberish category's gonna be unnatural love in the summertime. Remember, the quicker you are on the buzzer, the more cashish you'll snag. Okie doke, tell me if you will, with what common phrase does this gibberish phrase rhyme? Tan cuz hot. Give my head a bone. Oh, and uh, ignore that dash in there, okay? Take it away, player three. Type in your answer. <laughs> but if you do try to live by bread alone, you'll have really regular bowel movements. I'm just saying. Okay, player three, buzz in and... And your category is... Something old, something new, and some crappy music. So, uh, speaking of bread, uh, you know how at weddings they always play sappy pop songs by that band named Bread? Well, if you want to read a poem at your wedding that has the same title as a song by the band Bread, which poem might you choose? Charles Bukowski's Make It With You, Rudyard Kipling's If, Charlotte Bronte's Sweet Surrender, or Sylvia Plath's Baby I'ma Want You? Kipling's poem, If, has the same title as the ever-popular wedding tune by Bread. Just a little word of warning, though. Uh, showing the film version of Kipling's Ricky Tiki Tabby is a lame idea for the bachelor party. Player three. Nice. All right, high roller, here's what you're getting. Tight, buttery buns. Here comes the questione. 
If the Pillsbury Doughboy were to stand too close to an open oven and accidentally bake himself, what could you possibly snap off his toasted body as a tasty snack? His feet, his fingers, his belly button, or his nose? Player three, do it! Well, the Pillsbury Doughboy is not quite anatomically correct, but he does have a nose. And how does he smell? Delicious. Buzz in, player. There you go. Nice. Okay, here's your category. That's what I call going down. Okay, you know about the Mile High Club, right? <laughs> yeah, sure you do. But geez, who can afford air travel these days? If you wanted to join the Mile Low Club, where would you have to go? Grand Canyon, Mammoth Cave, Death Valley, or Carpal Tunnel? Player two. That big old hole is over a mile deep in some places. Whew. Unfortunately, you have to ride a burrow to get that far down. And by that time, you're too sore to be joining any club. Let's go, player two. But Wow, <laughs> player two, you better prepare to win big or lose big on this baby. Hey, player two, knock players one and three off their chairs, because you're getting your very own this or that. This this or that's category name is Polishing Ving Rhames Golden Globe. Okay, I'm going to read off the names of seven movies. And for each one, I want you to tell me if it's a Jack Lemmon film, a Walter Matthau film, or both. Cash in for each one you get right, but you lose out for each one you get wrong or that you don't get to. You got 30 seconds to nail all seven. And we're up. Grumpy old men, Lemon Math Hour Boat. Grumpy old men. The Odd Couple. The Odd Couple. Out to sea. The front page. Buddy, buddy. Five right. Solid mediocrity, my friend. Let's look at the current standings. Hey, player two's in the lead. Okay. Okay, player one, hit your buzzer and let's see what this Wow, big bucks on this one. All right, this one's called... Sure wish I hadn't wiped my mouth on that. Okay, here we go. Oh, wait. Man... You know, I always write down the answers to these questions in my notebook, you know, to keep an official record. But I couldn't find my notebook before we started this game, so I've been writing my answers on this napkin. I just wiped my mouth with it and threw it away. God, I am such a bonehead. Ah! All right, well, see if you can help me remember. Which of these has not been a correct answer in this game so far? Uh, Grand Canyon, Gamma Waves, Shaggy, or His Nose? All yours, player one. Shaggy. Yeah, he's the answer to a question you haven't seen yet. Oh, sh <laughs> Player one. This one's called... It's not a tuba. And away we go. If you buy your kids a Mr. Potatoes a gratin head, what will they be able to do with him? Place a corncob pipe in his corny mouth, slap a cheesy mustache on his cheesy face, pop a dopey hat onto his deep-fried head, or attach thick glasses to his thinly sliced head. Take it, player two. No, you didn't. <laughs> Who wants it? Player one, player three? You go, player three. Mmm, potatoes au gratin is a cheesy potatoey dish with a crusty baked top. But remember to blow on Mr. Potatoes au gratin head before you play with them. He's hot. Okay, player three, hit your buzzer and show... Get ready for... I'd rather chew on a Wilma. All right, 54, 32, that's some good coin. Let's go. If you pop a one-a-day-plus iron oxide tablet into your mouth, what will you get? Your daily dosage of gold, your daily dosage of formaldehyde, your daily dosage of rust, or... Player one! Iron oxide is a fancy term for rust. You know, I don't even bother with pills. I just suck on an old nail. Player one, hit that buzzer. Good picking. All right, what do we got here? Scooby-Doo, where were you? Look out, here it comes. 
Given his or her everyday wardrobe, which member of the Scooby-Doo gang would have the hardest time covering a hickey? Fred, Shaggy, Daphne, or Velma? Player three, do it! Well, you should have got this. I gave it to you. See, everyone else has their necks all covered up, but Shaggy just wears that damn t-shirt every day, so a hickey would be in plain view to the whole gang. But judging by that lame-ass goatee he's got, I'm guessing appearance isn't too high on Shaggy's priority list, you know? All right, player three, buzz in, and let's see the cash value for this one. Rusty and gross. Here, take a look. The origins of gross anatomy. Now remember, your anatomy won't be gross if you just wash it a couple times a day, okay? And pat it dry. Good luck. Give me them final scores. Player three's got it.